Hi, Jonathan. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, that you're from South Korea. Um, South Korea, uh, you know, a lot of people talk about sheep and goat nations, and I think they're full of garbage, these guys, but um, there's certainly going to be nations, whole nations that are sanctuaries, um, places where God will just dominate, right, and be heaven on earth. South Korea is one of them. And uh, so that's a great place. And, um, uh, you know, Canada's one, Australia's one, and South Korea's one. There's three countries that the whole country is going to be safe and full of God. And uh, so it's a blessing. 36, um, you know, you're getting towards uh, pretty mature, pretty uh, get your act together, pretty much know what you want to do. It's a good age. Some of the pride's been knocked out of you by then and you're getting a little bit more humble. So we'll just see what the uh, Lord has to say for you. Um, first of all, uh, the Lord wants to say, and uh, many people think they have to wait to heaven to hear this, but, uh, you know, not everyone knows the truth, you know. Uh, people, people, all they want to do is uh, hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And, uh, that's pretty good, but I want to hear a lot more from Jesus, you know. I just want to, um, him to have a <coughs> royal gala party in the front of the host of heaven. <coughs> and I want to have a whole night celebration and I want to have um, all the best stars of heaven um, give a speech and Jesus give a speech. And I want to have uh, an eight, uh, eight course meal and good uh good uh performances and just a great night and um because heaven's out of time i think you know we can just have a one week party and um you know how you see uh a football person um carried on the shoulders and they pass the guy above their shoulders around and yeah i just want to be celebrated and known for who i am um so that's just me. That's not about you. But uh, well done, good and faithful servant isn't like really big. <laughs> Jesus wants to say, first of all, to you, you're doing a good job and you've done a good job. And he wants to reinforce to you uh, that he's spoken to you. I don't know if he speaks to you uh, in your spirit but or through other people or through the Bible or through songs or through dreams. But he's let you know that you're special to him. And, you know, sometimes we hear, oh, you're so special. And uh, the people saying that you're special, I stab you in the back, you know, five minutes later. And, you know, um, sometimes I think Jesus says to everyone, you're so special. And um, he can't say that to everyone, right? I'll tell you why, because... The word special is for something set apart. Uh, you know, something that's ordinary is ordinary. Something that's set apart and extraordinary is special. And uh, you've heard him say that you're special to him. And that means you're a big cut above most ordinary Christians. So I just want to, like, uh, you know, I'm led by the Spirit. I just want to punch that home to you right now. Did you set apart and you a cut above and you're towering over the majority of Christians. You're special. He also says uh, that he's going to use you as a trumpet. Um, now, a trumpet is blown as celebration. Uh, a trumpet is blown before an event. And a trumpet is blown as uh, like a total uh, country wrecking or country saving prophecy is released. Um, so the trumpet blown as a celebration, you're going to, you're going to do things and enact things as a prophet. And I don't know if you know, you're called to be a prophet, but you are called to be a prophet. Um, you're going to enact things and start things and do things where it's going to make 
heaven and earth celebrate. So that trumpet. You're going to be a trumpet that leads a major contingent of the army. So when you blow that trumpet, when you give the command, the army's going to march forward. So you're going to be in a great leadership position in the coming army of God. That might be, be hard for you to get around. And then you're going to be used as a prophetic voice that brings blessing and brings judgment. And if they need blessing to turn them around, you use the blessing. But if you did three blessings to encourage and turn them around and they didn't respond to grace, well, you're going to give the better form of grace. You're going to whack something down so hard and a lot of people are going to suffer really hard because the three blessing ones and directions that come from that didn't work, right? And they refused to do what you did. You poured out something good three times and it manifested but you had directions and orders in what that happened. Three times they got the blessing, three times it manifested, three times they know you're true. Then you're going to come out with the trumpet of judgment and everyone who follows you and knows you and heard you and respects you and knows that you're a big voice and a powerful voice, then you're going to drop the judgment and it's just going to bang, it's just going to do things, right? People are going to die. People are going to lose jobs. People are going to ju be judged and exposed. People are going to be shifted. People are going to... Pick. What you were trying to do in the three blessings was tell people to do all those things and submit, and if you're doing this, do this and do this and do this. And uh, it'll surprise you when this three, three, four thing goes on because um, you'll always be releasing these blessing words. And sometimes you do a blessing word, another one you do a blessing word, another one you do a blessing word, then you do this word, 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 word. But one time you do a blessing, 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 and you won't know, but then the Spirit of the Lord will come forward and say, okay, send this out. And when you do the blessing, 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 you're moving in beautiful grace, blessing, building people up and stuff. You've got no aware, uh, awareness that they're totally in rebellion. All the feedback you're getting is, this is great, this is great, you're such a great prophet. And you do the blessing, 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 blessing one, and you'll be thinking, you're just doing such a great job, and everyone's reporting, they're changing, they're doing it, and uh, you, you'll be just the best prophet ever. And then the Holy Spirit will tell you, now drop this, and you say, I can't drop this. And he'll say, remember that Matthew Robert Payne guy? Yeah, and you got that prophecy off that guy in Australia. And uh, yeah, and he said you were going to do blessing, 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 and then it'll come as a surprise, and then you'll drop a judgment. And you'll say, yeah, I remember that. I didn't like that, actually. At the point, I, I wondered whether you could even judge and drop a judgment and kill people, and it wasn't really something that I was into. But I do remember you saying it. So, okay, now... I've built you up and trained you and equipped you. Now it's time for you to release this. Now, I know, Jonathan, this is going to be hard for you to receive. Uh, you're not a person who uh, would drop the angel of death on anyone. And, um, and I've never released a prophecy like this over anyone, but I'm going to be someone like this. But... Um, and I'm going to be doing stuff like this and I'm going to do it in a major scale and a lot more people are going to die with the judgment words that I drop. But God needs more people. God needs more true people. And God needs a Moses. God needs a Joshua. Right? God needs that guy who killed Jezebel, Jehu. Right there. Someone prophesied that Jezebel was going to uh, get done and then Jehu, whoever he was, he came along and did it. I, I forget, I, you know, I haven't read the Bible for a lot, but whatever he says, he says, throw her out the window. You, you're going to be, I don't know, um, I don't know everything. I just know certain things and whatever the Lord tells me. But um, 
You may know about this Jehu. You may have heard teaching about the Jehu anointing. I'm not really into people talking about a saint in the past and this anointing because they're either full of it and talking out their ass and sorry for that. They're normally talking about something they've got no idea on. And, and uh, so I've never been into the Joshua company or the Jehu company or the Elijah company because there's so many people saying that, um, you know, spirit of Elijah and spirit of Elijah and the Elijah company, right? And I don't believe it. Elijah was pretty special and that's a pretty huge anointing. And you'd have to pay a lot of sacrifice to be a John the Baptist. And there wasn't two John the Baptist. When John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah on him, we only needed one. So this idea of 10,000 Elijahs, I'm thinking, what for? You get a, you get a Jehu like you or an Elijah anointing on me, and we can deal with the whole world just with one anointing. And, you know, this is funny for you and it's funny for me because I'm, I'm prophesying and then I'm doing some explanation and teaching, but that's how the Lord wants it to go now. So I don't know what's happened to you, Jonathan. I don't, I don't know your past. And, you know, believe me, if the Lord wanted to tell me, I could tell you a whole lot of specific things uh, in your life, but he says I don't need to know, and so I don't know. But whatever you cried out to the Lord, and whatever you continued to cry out to the Lord, whatever promise you kept on promising the Lord and saying to the Lord in tears when you're worshipping, like, I'll do anything for you. I'll give anything for you. I'll, I'll leave anything for you. I'll lay down anything for you. I'll give up anything for you. I will do anything for you. Just ask me. Whatever it was, and if it was something like that, you didn't say it once. You've said a lot. And you got this heart in you to make a major change and a major shape and a major impact. You got a heart of justice in you. You got a heart of compassion that just makes you weep. You got so much love and tenderness and joy and grace in you. And you just cry and weep for the brokenhearted. And you just wish it would all end and someone could fix it. And this might be overwhelming for you to hear this. But God heard all of that. And Jesus heard all of that. And I'm not prophesying anything that I'm not going to do. I'm just going to do like it 500 times as big as what you do. So I'm talking about something that I'm going to do, but I'm going to be killing 500 times the amount of people you do and be affecting a lot more people than you do. But you're like a dumbed-down little version of me. And I just hear the Jehu anointing. So I don't know much about Jehu. I think he was a leader or a king or leader of the army or whatever. Whatever he was, he was very important, very good. And he actually knocked out that Queen Jezebel, um, which her witchcraft was, was destroying the whole of Israel. So he knocked out the most evil person in Israel. Um, and I don't know much about Jehu. And I think you'll learn a lot about who you are by doing research or watching videos or doing whatever you need to do with someone who's got a lot of uh, revelation on Jehu. Um, God heard your prayer. And God's, you know, through this prophecy, up the ante. Right? Now, you may have to wait 5 or 10, 15, 20 years, whatever you wait. Things are going to start really moving in three years, I can tell you that much. I've got to wait three years before I do something, but... If this book I'm working on gets published and the world finds out about this book, it'll be on then. So you've been waiting a long time. You've been doing things. You've been keeping busy. You've been uh, very patient. You've suffered a lot. You've given up a lot. There's nothing you wouldn't given up. And there's nothing you wouldn't do. The idea of killing millions of people or 500,000 people and uh, push, pushing the angel of death around uh, 
North Korea, South Korea or North Korea, or anywhere in the world God calls in minister, just a bit deep and a bit scary. And if you consider that, it's going to be hard to receive. Now, if you can receive it and you say, yeah, that's me, I'll do that. Well, that's good. I hope you can. But I get a sense that you'll have to meditate on this one. You have to think about this one. And um, when that day comes in the future, five years, 10 years, 20 years, whenever that day comes, when the Holy Spirit of Jesus, whoever talks to you, says, now I want you to release this one. And it's a no mucking around one. And when you release it, the whole of South Korea, North Korea, or wherever you're ministering, will put you on the map. After you do that, after you release that, the whole country will be in fear of you. And then you'll rule and reign that country. And the kings and the leaders and the CEOs of other countries will come to you. And so if you want to hear about that in more depth, just read Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 is for a lot of people. There's going to be a lot of people moving in that. But you're going to have Isaiah 60 like it was written just for you. And uh, you read that. And uh, everything I said is in Isaiah 60. You meditate that. And, and, and God will work however long he needs to work on you. And he'll keep on using you and building you stronger and stronger and stronger. So when that happens, and you won't know when it's going to happen, you won't know the day, the year, you'll have no idea. But when that day happens and he tells you to do it, you know, get in touch with me. You'll know Matthew Robert Payne. Matthew Robert Payne will be known by the whole world. You contact me. You just ask. You just get through to my PA. You just tell them about this prophecy. Even send me the link of this prophecy. And you get talking to me on that day. When you release that, before it rolls out, before the angel of death rolls out, when you've got that prophecy and you're just about to release it, you get in touch with me on that day. And you do your double check and you share that with me and what the Lord told you to say. And I'll give the approval, right? I'll, I'll drop the hammer and I'll agree. I'll agree with that. And I'll, I'll, I'll even drop that for you. And I'll drop it, and then I'll say, this was constructed by this person, right? So I'll drop it for you, but you're going to drop it in your name. And underneath you'll say, this was authorised and checked and confirmed by Prophet Matthew Robert Payne from Australia. And, and when they see it and they doubt that it's going to happen, when they see this was checked by and authorised by Matthew Robert Payne, Australia. And this is when he said I was going to do it and watch this video. And I'm telling you, you need to do this and you need to change and you need to change in the next 24 hours or this is going to drop. And they won't change and they won't do it and they won't do it. When, you, when they hear Matthew Robert Payne, they'll, they'll shit themselves, but they still won't do it. And then when, when that drops, your country, South Korea, or the country you drop it on North Korea, the whole of Korea, if the people are prophesying the North and South are going to be one, I don't care for prophets and I don't care for what other prophets say. I only care for what God tells me. And from time to time, he'll let me see something of another prophet which agrees with what he's told me. But I don't really follow prophets. You know, I'm a prophet and I'm a very big prophet. And, and years to come, in three to, years, three to five years, you'll know who I am. And, and, and when you see me dropping stuff and doing stuff, you'll look back to this and you'll say, okay, well, I don't want to do that, but when the day comes, I'll contact him. So you contact me on that day. Show me a video of the prophecy or show me a transcript of the prophecy. We'll have a talk, whether the talk is one hour or five hours, whatever you need. We'll spend the time. And when the, you make that call through, I'll be ready. The PA will put me through. You'll send this video and I'll have five hour gap on my schedule or a two hour gap or whatever I need. And my PA will know 
this two hours for something, we're blocking this out. Something's going to happen. The Lord told me, you need two hours today. We don't know what it's for, but you need it, right? My PA is going to be one of the best PAs in the world has ever seen. And, and when she says and shows me this video, it'll be for you. The email will come out two hours before that time, and I'll watch it. I'll say, holy, oh, man, I was prophesying that. Now, I've never released a word like this in my life. 25,000 words. I've never released something like this before, right? This is the hugest word I've ever dropped in my life. But I've come to a new authority in the last two weeks, and I'm not mucking around anymore. And uh, so um, I, hope, I pray, <laughs> dear Jesus, bless this guy, work on this guy, minister to this guy, let him become everything he needs to be. And when that day comes, give him the courage to ring me. God bless.